Hi, good evening. Welcome to Garplet Games. It is the day of frying or fray, depending on <laughs> how you want to look at it. And we're here to play episode one of Traveller Ren Space, an elite team of super professional hardcore role players has assembled to bring you great space glee. And we're just going to go around and introduce their characters so you know who to bat for and who to spend your groats on. So, should we start with the youngest or the oldest? Let's start with the oldest. <laughs> All right, you had to call me out. All right, so I am a, I'm an old head in space. Uh, I'm playing... Um, let me see. Uh, what is my character's name? I need to open the roll 20. <laughs> you can't get the help these days. That's the problem. I, I know. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm having a senior moment here because uh, my character is, as I've mentioned, old. Um, <laughs> by traveler standards, I should say. Probably not by actual, um, you know, canonical standards. She's in her 50s. She's not actually that old. Um, so I'm playing uh, Kashaf Hawa. Hawa being her, uh, you know, given name, Kashaf, her family name. And uh, she was formerly Captain Kashaf of the uh, Yanon Empire. Uh, but after seeing uh, seeing through the lies of the Jedi, as it were, um, she kind of figured that she didn't want to work for them anymore. Um, so she then became a scout and, uh, ex uh, sorry, a, a space ranger working for the, um, the team that uh, aspires to keep space lanes safe and uh, explore new worlds. And that's what she did for uh, another 20 years of her life um, before throwing in with these fools. So She's not old, more, more seasoned. Seasoned, yeah. Seasoned is definitely the way to And, and zoom in on your face. Come on, bring your face a bit closer. All right, look, all look, right. at this. Look, look at this. Yeah. Sheer professionalism. She's put the scars <laughs> on. Look at that. <laughs> Mm. Next up on the winning in the makeup department is Veronique. Hi, I am playing Marques Bimnustarte of Picker. And um, she started her life like she, she came to be known for being known and having her sex tape leaked on Channel 66, as you get known. And uh, through some form of arranged marriage, she became the Marquess of Bicker. And uh, she is recently divorced, but um, she managed to hang on to the title and her husband got stripped of the title. However, the title comes with responsibilities, like being the envoy of Utan to uh, What's the name of those Puritans again? The Yatan? Yunnan Empire? The Yunnan, Yunnan Empire, Yunnan. Yes. Yeah, she, she should be the envoy of Utan to the Yunnan Empire, but she's getting the fuck out of Dutch, doesn't want to do it. Mm. Yeah, Fikor is the closest that the Commonwealth of Uthas have to a sort of noble and stodgy um, group of people because the rest of the population are fairly licentious and they have the the, the home world that is um, the one with drugs pumped out into the atmosphere for entertainment value so um, being a straight laced one of those guys doesn't take much and the Marquess so we've managed to keep the Garblag tradition of um, maintaining nobility in the crew intact Thank you, Jeff. Jeff's just um, instructing that the Marquess stay hydrated, as his Marquise used to do. Also, it prevents uh, sanity rolls if you're hydrated. Please tell me it's not that thing with Clamato juice. No, it's <laughs> it's even worse. It's some um, it's key lime, key lime flavored, zero calorie fizzy water. It really, really tastes of fake sugar, but I love it. That's what I'm drinking too, except it has alcohol in it. <laughs> Didn't have a drink. Well, oh. in that case, the next most hydrated person is Lee. Look at that classy oh, wow. cup. Lee, who are you playing? Indeed. What you got? 
Hello, indeed. Greetings. Uh, salutations. It's so great to see you here. It's great to be here. Um, I am playing Persile Pavlova Hex. She is a agent, but also entertainer. Um, on, yeah, one of the Uthusian planets. Uh, she is officially, you know, just sort of went into working for the government also as an entertainer, uh, but is in fact an agent and flies around the galaxy getting up to, well, events. Uh, some of them are in line with what the government wants to happen. And then, you know, sometimes she improvises. Uh, it's, it's a very relaxed uh, surveillance state with this on New Viridian. And yeah, my character is a, yeah, front is a performer, but in reality I am an agent and that's more or less the drip. I have met these wonderful people as part of my career going undercover and I'm not sure where we are, but I'm sure it's gonna be a wild ride. Speaking of wild ride, let's go to the craziest of crazy men. It's Nye. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Nye. I'm playing Ker Pavlov. No relation to the, the prior person that sounds like that. Uh, and I am I am a very smart person. I, I'm so smart that I didn't even bother actually doing my job. They just let me leave me alone. But um, on my home planet, I have solved my problems and would like some tougher challenges. So I have thrown in my lot with these guys, hopefully, so I don't die and I can explore the universe and learn great many things. It's really saying something when you come from like an arch technocracy and you've run out of problems to solve. Oh yeah, they just yeah. Like, sorry, uh, your maths is boring now. I'm going to go and look at space maths. I want, I want, <laughs> I want the number that comes before zero. <laughs> I think I have one. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Negative two. Yes. So there we go. <laughs> uh, if you if you caught up with any of the world building streams, you know a little bit about Ren Space, which is the sector you can see down here. It's a sector of space that's bisected by this line of destroyed planets and stars, creating a kind of natural barrier across the sector. It was done deliberately by the Wren, who are an advanced species, who have now mostly left the sector because um, of their relationship with humans going a little bit sour. See, the Wren brought the humans into the sector erased all of their history and then went hey those guys over there are the bad guys we're not and then the humans found out that the wren had erased their history and decided that they were a little bit offended by that so they went on an ass kicking spree and scared the wren out of space because the wren are actually quite fragile creatures they're a kind of gestalt consciousness from these silicate based life forms that are semi-modular and so realizing that humans had hammers and that would be a significant threat to them they kind of ran scorched earth policy blew a lot of stuff up on the way out which has then left the humans to occupy this sector of space as best they can fill it up with their own planets and their own stuff going on there are other alien species sort of lurking around the fringes popping in and out here and there but we're beginning in a mostly human governed space. So this is this is people space. Aliens exist, but they're considered aliens, despite the fact that humans don't come from here. They've just taken it as their own, as humans are often want to do. So you've got a range of different political alliances and things going on. And we're going to be starting just to the stage left. That side? Yeah, that side. Just waiting right. for my Twitch to catch up so that I know I'm pointing in the right direction. <laughs> I can see my confused uh, face, so it'll be any... Yeah, well, there we go. So it's just to that side of the go. pink blob. Just to that side of the pink blob that you can see on the map, which is the Sobelir... Not Empire. Sobelir Republic which is one of the smaller polities that tend to stay out of things very much, but they are at war with the Yunnan Empire. 
So that's their nice. major deal. But just outside of their space, there is a corporate site um, called Shipyard. Uh, literally, the name of the corporation and the space where they live is the Shipyard. So we're in orbit around a brown dwarf star. It's a privately run shipyard that mass produces ships for independent sale. It also acts as a kind of junkyard, resale, auction house for ships that have been gotten hold of through legal, quasi-legal and illegal means, which is where we first meet our group of players. Now, they've pooled resources to go in together on a ship using the keen legal insight of the Marquess to finagle their way into full ownership of a former safari ship turned drug smugglers mobile den a ship by the name of the vindictive bitch he named it after his mother I now like his mother the marquess has finagled the finances of this so as to launder the money that she got in the divorce so that nothing can be linked back to her transferred a lot of the ownership rights into the name of um, nice scientist Keir so that he looks to be responsible for it because he had a lab ship under his own control that he traded in as part of his investment in this little project. Uh, the other two have come in as well on the deal so um, Persilaeus is someone that the Marquess knows from her history in Uthus and uh, Kashaf Hawa has been out there tooling around in space, has a wealth of experience and is a very highly trained shit kicker which every group of space adventurers needs. So they Also just... like the Marquess, I hate the Hanan. Yeah, she also hates the Yanan so screw those guys. Well, See, it's not that I hate them, is if they got to know me, they would hate me. <laughs> Precisely. It's preemptive hate. <laughs> Advance hate. Now half the price. We were just about to see our players sitting inside we've just started Aaron because OBS died on me so we're sat in the lounge waiting to pick up our ship true DMV experience yep. yeah true, true DMV yeah. experience true, true, the true, way true, you were from... expecting you mentioned a food replicator that's set to non-alcoholic drinks right yes that's right there's a food replicator well, in the corner making drinks of course I wouldn't be a and socialite if I didn't have emergency vodka on myself. Naturally. <laughs> so uh, you know what I'm going to order from the juice factory. Oh, not Clamato. Spicy Clamato with a dash of Worcestershire and <laughs> celery salt. It's like, tell me and there's I'll something worse than Musa Cola it. without telling me there's something worse than Musa Cola. You're... You're insulting all Canadians if you insult the bloody Caesar. All right, you have your bloody Caesar. So you, you get some some Clamato juice. It's got that slight chemically tang that, that replicators often do. Especially the lower tech end ones. Meanwhile, out the window, people who are looking can see the brown dwarf star very dimly in the distance. And big robot arms moving around on the shipyard, assembling hulls, um, bolting together bits of ships, some even taking apart bits of other ships. And displayed on a screen for your delectation and delight is a floor plan of the ship that you've just purchased through your careful application of finance and legal know-how and it's it's quite a big ship actually it's designed and built as a survey sh as a safari ship but has been subsequently modified by its previous owner to contain a laboratory and quite luxurious living quarters 
So it's going to be a much more higher standard of living for at least Ooh. two of you than you're used to. Marques might be slumming it a little bit. But these are state rooms rather than bunk rooms. So you'll be eating somewhere halfway decent. It's got a few upgrades. So there's a missile launcher on it for... Um, Officially, it's for dealing with asteroid debris and collision risks. And it comes with a standard turret as well, which has been increased in power from a double to a triple turret. And it's quite a nippy piece of kit as well. Outside is painted silver and blue. Two massive wings. The whole ship looks like one big wing that's just really quite fat in the middle and then tapers out on each end to these two points and you see it fly in on remote and back up to the docking bay just below the lounge that you're in you hear it connect from the outside there's a locking sound and a click and you're in A droid rolls its way into the room on a uni wheel. Got gyroscopic stabilizers. And it kind of balances there with this big globe like head on it, with an almost comical face painted on the front with big light up eyes and a happy smile that it's been equipped with. It says, Good afternoon, your ship is ready. Thank you kindly. That is a beautiful hunk of chunk. I will get up expecting people to carry my 12 pieces of luggage for me. I, I also get up and I don't have nearly as much luggage and I'm carrying it myself. The droid will roll over and pick up as much of the luggage as it can feasibly handle. When it realizes it can't handle anymore, it deploys two more arms from inside its chest cavity and picks up a few more bags. The gyroscope whirs slightly as it struggles to lift you. Not you, your stuff. And it kind of whirs into motion. Follow me, please. Effect pleasure. And it rolls out of the room and down a sloped ramp, which it goes down quite fast given the amount it's carrying, onto a landing and then round and down another sloped ramp into a sort of boarding terminal corridor. Long corridor, windows looking out onto space, um, a sets of doors at regular intervals all the way along the right hand side where ships can dock and be boarded and at that point I will ask you to make an observation roll of some type what's the skill for observing things? Recon? Recon is probably a bit much because I've had to close my um, character sheet page so Investigate yeah, might be better. All right. Investigate uh, based on intellect. Yes. Investigate based on intellect. Can I roll a jack of all trades roll? You can roll a pilot roll, actually, Pat. Oh, cool. Um, I'm assuming that goes with the not small. Okay, I'm gonna need you to tell me what you got. I I hit an eight. Or I need to hit a five. Eight, eight is target, eight. right? Yep. Okay, then only uh, Lee makes it. Okay. What do I see with my spying eyes? With your spying eyes, which is good because you are the spying spy. Uh, while everybody else is obviously focused on getting to this door that's got your ship behind it. You take a look out the other side and out of these narrow windows, narrow oblong windows that they've got fitted, you see slowly making its way in to dock at the station, there is a Nightfall Industries Corvette, all Ooh. painted black, stealthy against the stars, moving quite slowly but specked with light. Almost looks like the background 
for a second, but you recognise the silhouette as it pulls in. It would seem we have unwanted company. Nightfall has come calling, and something tells me they're not here for coincidental oil change. Oh shit, them! <laughs> That's great. I do believe they are your acquaintances. We're not close friends, you might I, say. I sure hope they don't stay close, or I might have to uh, dance. And I, you know, uh, grab the hilt of my cutlass, not drawing it, but sort of, you know, gesticulate and say, well, I think we're all good to be off then, right? I, I, yeah. Guess I don't have anything left. She's and probably is there, gone. Is there any sort of, like, way to check, like, I, I don't have any computer knowledge. I probably don't even know. But, like, is it normal that we would know people's comings and goings like they're broadcasting it? Or I just literally had to see this with my eyes. I, it was the seeing it with your eyes. You wouldn't normally, because it's someone else's space station. I mean, maybe if this was an Uthan station and you needed to be informed, then traffic control would tell you. But people wouldn't usually broadcast who was coming and going. It's not like this is a, a passenger terminal. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, coming down the corridor towards you is a, a slightly rounded human wearing a, a plain grey uniform crossing over on one side that's got the, the logo of not in the Yunnan style. Briefly, Pat, crossed over Yunnan style. No. <laughs> Wait, I, I think there's another uh, another faction though that does uh, crossed over. Um, oh, th this guy's wearing a, a shipyard uniform. Okay. So it's okay. It did creep you out the first time you saw it as well that their uniform looks a little bit close to um, like the military reserves on some of the Yunnan worlds, but it's mm -hmm. not a full crossover and side down. It just crosses over at the top and then slides back in a slashed pattern. And it's got this big shipyard logo over the right-hand side of his chest. He's kind of straining the seams around the belly a little bit, and he comes sort of jogging up to you, puffs a little bit. He says, sorry about that. Um, thank you, Marques. Uh, great honour, pleasure, privilege. Thank you so much uh, for purchasing your ship from Shipyard. Uh, do you require a, a rename service or any specific launching um, rituals or plans? Well, the launching ritual we'd like is as soon as possible. Yes, yes, of course. Um, and he, he pulls um, a tablet from round his back and he holds it out to you and says, Oh, um, sorry, yes, you, you brokered the deal on behalf of of Professor Pavlov, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, Professor, if I could take your print then, please. Okay. Just, yep. Thumb wherever I'm using. And as broker, if you could print on the next page, Marques. Hold on, did you, you cut out of there for a second. What did you say? That's, that's fine. He's trying to get the Marques to offer a handprint and she was ignoring him. He presents this pad to you, Vero, which has got like a picture of a hand on it. May I take your imprint? Of course not. Yes, okay. I I will I'll I'll bypass that because of your your valued custom and he, he starts frantically typing away. Um 16 alpha numeric there. Um, okay, so reaches into a, a hip pocket and pulls out some teeny tiny little key ring like things. A little ring with just a tiny little modern day it would look like a USB drive maybe. Uh, he gives you like a dozen of these things. It gives sorry. He gives Professor Pavlov a dozen of these things. Um, those are the access keys that you'll need for your crew. Um, 
but thank you thank you so much thank you so much for your uh your your patronage and and thank you so much for gracing us your 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 honor with your presence i'll just raise my glass of bloody caesar as I <laughs> cheers of course you still got your vodka and clamato <laughs> Staying hydrated. <laughs> He's like, well, uh, thank you very much then, and I'll see you on your way. And he presses his hand against the airlock door, and it slides up into your standard airlock sized opening, slightly larger maybe than certainly than you would be used to, Pat and Nye. It's nice and shiny. That's all that matters to me. Uh, I'm assuming that I'm sitting in the pilot seat. So you're going in, you cycle the airlock, and it opens up into your ship, which I have not put on any overheads, because hell, Twitch is twitchy with me at the best of times. But it opens up into a docking bay in which, Pat, you can see that your fighter is parked. Hmm. All right. Got to wheel this bad boy into the safari, actually. No, this, that's the safari bit that I mean. It's, oh, it's in mind. the docking bay of the safari. So you walk into the, the oh, safari sorry. docking bay. It smells really quite nice in here. It's like not even new car smell, new spaceship smell. It, there's there's a, a definite sort of aroma to the air. Um, Veronique and Lee, you might recognize it slightly. I was just about to say. Mm, because it, it, it smells a little bit like Uther's Prime, but oh. not all the way. Hmm. All right, so it's more like ooh to drug binge than the Yeah, the more, more drug binge than the entire atmosphere is flooded with it. You know, I'm going to take a deep breath in, like, smell of freedom. <laughs> So, your ship is a 200-tonner. Doesn't have a lot by way of armour. Is got thrust one, jump two. Will operate for four weeks at jump two. Has a fighter in place of the launch it used to have. Has a business computer grade five. A triple turret, docking space, fighter, second docking space. Uh, there's a, an air raft, a fuel scoop, fuel, fuel processes. One multi-environment space that you can program to be whatever you want. One working chemistry lab. Yes, I would like to go to that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite a nippy thing. Like, literally, as soon as he realises where the lab is... Yeah, I mean, like, it is right away. next door to the, the oh, docking bay where this fighter craft... The fighter craft is smaller than the launch that would normally go in here because they're quite cramped because it's a one-person craft instead of a sort of four- or five-person craft. So the fighter fits in quite snugly with plenty of space. And the lab is pristine. It's beautiful. It's obviously recently been cleaned. Is definitely angled towards the chemistry side of things, but there are some biological elements in place. Um, you could probably upgrade a few bits and pieces without too much difficulty to serve as a medical bay. Okay. There's not a lot of raw materials present, but mm. equipment-wise, it's good to go. Marcus, you you spoil me letting me pilot one of these things. This is a beauty of a ship. I guess I'll do. And I'm like considering like, oh, I gave away the yacht for that piece of crap. I mean, it even smells good. I, I can't put my tongue oh, on. Oh, that for sure. Yeah, it, 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 it smells of holidays. <laughs> holidays. <laughs> I've heard of those. So also on the lower deck, you've got 
you've got what on a conventional safari ship would be a trophy lounge. Now, it appears to be a bar on this ship rather than a trophy lounge. As so, I specified, good. So there's, there's a bar, there is a disco ball and a bit of a dance floor, some comfortable chairs spaced around it. It looks more like an executive lounge or the sort of thing you might see in an officer's mess, Pat, rather than what you'd be used to seeing in a ship. What, what is that big dangly shiny thing? Uh, is that a sensor? It's for dancing. You never uh, danced. No, I, I, we, we have dances at the Yana Empire. It's just kind of more of a ritual oh, thing. Oh, please, don't, don't mention don't mention them, please. Uh, fair. I mean, trigger, I've done, I've done some word, dancing. Trigger word, don't mention. <sighs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I've done some dancing as a scout, though. Uh, you know, some of the asteroids had some places. My understanding is uh, we should be leaving as soon as possible. Where can we go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the hell out of Dodge. Well, on this floor, uh, there's an elevator. You've got a couple of um, fairly well-appointed luxury suites. There are four suites on this floor and a further seven suites on the floor above. There's also the elevator from here up to the main deck where you've got the office, common area, and the cockpit, obviously. Those things well, that you might need for the flying of the ship. I say the office is also kind of a cockpit. And it's a little bit more upmarket than you're used to. I suppose we could probably uh, save the tour for uh, deep space. <clears throat> With uh, Nightfall having arrived at the hangar and all. Right. It seems uh, an expeditious moment to... Now would be the time, yeah. Well, we're getting as good as they say. Now <clears throat> would be the time to go. Do you have any idea where you want to go? So you start firing up the computer systems. I mean, everything's oh. been on because they What's flew it, it in. You didn't say the jump range. It's got a jump range of two. Okay. I leave deciding where to go to the uh, person who owns the ship. I just fly the thing. So your oh, jump I'm, range I'm is from here. It could take you into independent space if you go to sort of A6... It could take you through the barrier. You're going to want to do that one jump at a time because the barrier gets very hairy. Into Sobelir space, or you've got the other two bits of independent space that are down there in B and D. Well, Sobelir, they're, they're cool, right? Sobelir are pretty cool. I mean, they, yeah, they yeah, might yeah. take a little bit of umbrage with you having a Yunnan crew member, but when they find out she's wanted by the Yunnan as well, they might be more inclined <laughs> to like her. All right, to Sophia's space. To Sophia's space it is. Uh, right. Okay, so who's going to make an astrogation roll? I think that, that might be nice, Ballywick. Might be nice. Yes, yeah, so I was going to have to tell him, though, because he's going to be like, what the fuck is this? They've just left, like, a shit ton of al aluminium chloride. What the fuck am I meant to do? Like, <laughs> just, like, fanning about with, like, that. oh, for fuck's sake. I can't work with this, but I don't know. I can make the roll. I, I don't mind. It's oh, you're the only one with astrogation, so I hope you're doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if you come and tell me, you'd be like, what? Oh. Or else uh, we're rolling okay. at minus two at best. <laughs> okay, I shall make the roll. I got an 11. I don't know what that means, but that's why. Sounds like a rousing success. Yes, 11 is good. Yeah, you're going your target for high is targets. Eight, target is 8. Okay. Child's uh, play. Yeah. I asked well, if let's... we could go further, and you guys were like, no, I'm not allowed to change the ships at all. So I'm like, oh. So I've been playing like I'm the pilot, but um, does anybody have better than a minus 2? Because I might not actually. I'm going to be a minus 2. Okay. Wait, I have minus 1, but I, I think uh, that's... What's piloting the base skill is dex? The, the base yeah. uh, attribute is dex. So I have piloting small craft and pilot not small. Okay, uh, pi pilot not like if you have it at one, it gives you piloting zero in all. Uh, I I would be I think I'd be rolling. So you're rolling at zero. I would be rolling. I think well, a three. Uh, I, I think I'm rolling a uh, plus three to pilot. Oh. 
Okay, well, you're the pilot then. Wait. It's like you're the pilot. All right, so I step into the cockpit and I'm like, ah, yes, let me just, um, and then I'm going to sit down at the co pilot cockpit and really quickly punch the thing that lets you, you know, like actually fly. And, uh, I guess I'll, uh, I'll sit somewhere else then. <laughs> You've got the gunner talent, so there's always the guns. Yeah, I, I'm definitely good, good, good at 10 on the piloting role, sorry. Excellent news. So you throw it into gear, pull out smoothly, and start to make your way out of the shipyard. Uh, behind you, there's this enormous uh, hexagonal shape of the shipyard itself. So it's kind of this um, dodecahedron floating ah. around in space. And then yeah. attached to it, you've got all of these big hexes in big flat platforms that are hollow on the inside and have these sort of robot arms attached to them for assembling and destroying ships. So as you head out, looking behind you, you can see this Nightfall Industries ship just coming into dock. And so they, they kind of pull up alongside one of these platforms and rotate in place before locking themselves in. It doesn't look like they're giving pursuit from here. But does do Vero or Pat, either of you want to make a, a sensors roll? What would be the skill? The skill on sensors. that would be electronic it's electronic sensors. Yeah, electronics sensors. Um, so I have a uh, rank zero in it. So all right, I've got a question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, at the end where it says total, it usually shows up as a negative. That's correct, right? It probably shouldn't. No, yeah, you're... you're did you, did you, you click, click the train? Have you clicked train? Oh, in all I haven't things? done that for literally anything. All of the skills oh, that you've spent yeah. points in, you're trained. Every that skill you've gotten, every time it goes to zero, you're supposed to click that to get trained. You're... Oh, and also, yeah. you're about to go up by three and everything. If if you're trained in a subset of a skill, like oh, I have sensors at one. Guess what? Electronics is at zero, and all of it is at zero except the one you're trained in. I have electronics. So three. piloting small craft one mm. means you have piloting zero. One. Oh, okay. Wait, so that, that actually, okay, that changes my stats a little bit. Actually, it's even yes. better. I, um, okay. I, I could do electrons unless I need to be sitting at a different station to do astrogation. But that's well, only I've got like a one I'm, in it. While you're astrogating, you need to be astrogating, and Lee's piloting, so it needs to that's be no variable path. I, so. I was just checking. I think I've got guns, but um, if you want me to take the electronics, I don't feel like that would be. I do that. have electronics. Uh, I do have a. I, I would be rolling at plus two, so I can. That's better than mine. Do you want me to roll it? Okay. Okay, and for everybody watching, I have just started an 80,000 groat giveaway. All you have to do is not Ooh. vote wrong. So you've got two choices who wants free groats? And if you vote I do, when that prediction gets closed down, those 80,000 that I've put in, no, take mine away, will get shared out to everybody who votes against me. So it doesn't matter what you vote in the I do, you'll get a big old chunk of those 80,000 groats that are going out, which will help you on all future garblaggery. So if you're in chat and you want some free groats, go into the who wants some free groats prediction and go, I do. I if you're like a mug, Go in and tick. Take mine away. Because We've I will. Or rather I won't, great. but Millie or Pete will. We've got a great you made the roll, by the way, on sensors. Excellent. So your sensors tell you that the ship that has just docked is actively sweeping the area with their sensors to see who's coming and going. So they're using active sensors to track comings and goings in this space okay um uh Persis, how soon can we jump likely to be hours yes because you have to clear the you have to clear the gravity well from the, the brown yeah. dwarf 
So at least 12 hours. Well, I mean, we are also not a ship that they perhaps would recognize unless they uh, we look are... into well, our hopefully finances. Hopefully they quickly. don't. Where is Astro? Yeah, Corvettes are quite fast, so you best hope that your legal shenanigans do hold up. Yes. Where, where is, where the worst thing we can do in this situation is act in any suspicious way, which might give them a reason to believe that we are running from them. As long as we take yeah, a Yeah, so let's future. let's act normal. If we can jump right away, then let's act as casual as possible. Yep, you heard the lady fly casual. Where, where's the astrogation place? Like, would it be near any other things, or is it just on its, it's own? It's kind of like co-pilot seat. Here. Yeah, astrogation. Oh, okay. um, the um, the office slash cockpit is quite large. It is itself a little bit like a lounge. It's more. Um, command deck of the enterprise from next generation than anything else it's comfy chairs it's nice smooth panels it's separated out sections so you've got a pilot co-pilot then you've got gunnery station you've got an astrogation station and then there's a really big comfy chair that veronique is probably sitting in right now well does it have a cup holder yes it does well that's the one i'm picking <laughs> So, so there's like other people in the room with me while I'm doing the calculation. Yeah, you're pretty much all there. Okay, that that's fine. When you I'm can do astrogation back, from elsewhere on the ship, but well, it's well, he, harder. Well, yeah, he's just kind of doing it, but once he's done, he's going to be like, can I go back to the lab, please? Uh, once oh, you've run oh, those oh. calculations, you can do what you want. Yeah, no, he, he gets out. He's probably not even going to ask. He's just going to get up once the calculations are done and, and wander off back to the lab. Just not even acknowledge anything. Okay, so you start to make your way out. Is there anything you want to do on your way out from the station? Science! Science! I, um, I want to take a good look at what guns we've got on this ship. And, uh, you know, I want to prep maybe... Uh, well, if we have, like, some downtime when things aren't happening, I do want to go down to my fighter and prep it for launch if need be. Sure, sure. Well, running a weapons check, um, like a gunnery roll. Okay. Not to shoot them, just to run a weapons check. Yeah, let's see how my gunnery uh, actually... Uh, come on, where's my button for it? Um, gunner is... What is the, the skill uh, on that? Intelligence or dexterity? Uh, for this one, it'll be intelligence. Or education, maybe? Mm, intelligence, because you're okay, running a check on it. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, oh, sorry. I'll let Pat finish her thing. Okay. Uh, wow, I really feel like I'm rolling poorly. Yeah. Hmm. No dice. I got four. Oh. So the, the gunnery systems are still in some kind of safety shutdown mode that's been activated by the station and you can't bypass it at this stage Oof. so you That's can see that about. there's a turret and a missile launcher but you can't run them through their paces you can't activate them i mean clearly this thing's got a little bit of a history and the shipyard are a little bit iffy about letting someone fly out with weapons hot so they've put this slow burn on that that you can't bypass at this stage uh, uh, we better fly casual. Looks like there's a uh, bypass that I can't quite pull off here. What about your weapons. fighter craft? That's what I'm going to check on now. I hope they didn't toggle with my baby. And for reference, uh, the Empire wants you alive or... I don't know uh, if they want me alive or dead. Uh, but uh, they want me and not doing things in space is uh, how they want me. So. Hmm. And I would like to proceed. So I'm assuming there's like a major airlock. So if there was going to be a ship to ship boarding event and someone was going to try and come in an airlock, is there like one of those on this ship? Multiple? The best one would probably be where you came in because that's also okay. the launch bay for the fighter. So if you could tie that up. Yeah, I would like to go there and just sort of like, I'm going to assume that there is like uh I'll be going um, that, with you because we're going the same direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm walking here and I'm like, so in your professional opinion, if you were a boarder, what would you do coming through this airlock? 
Oh, well, um, I list off a number of things that probably actually sound pretty, uh, pretty valid. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, Ben, what, what, what would I do if I were to uh, invade a ship? If you were doing it military style, you'd have Marines and you'd pop open the back door, leave it exposed so that anybody trying to fight against you would also be having to deal with the fact that it was venting atmosphere. Then you'd move in in spacesuits and take the rooms on the sides as you moved forward through the ship and then up. All right. Um, honestly, so like, so this is a pressurized cabin, right? Yep. Is it, there's a kitchen. This is a nice. This is a nice uh, fucking. Yes, uh, craft, but this right? is this, the room that you're going to. That's got the fighter in. Is a depressurizable hold, so you can also depressurize it. All right. What I want to do is I want to arrange near the arrow. Okay. So wait. So you're talking they would force open the hangar. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. okay. Because I was gonna I was gonna put a dining cart full of silverware, to just kind of <laughs> shrapnel itself out the door of them. But I don't think we have that much silverware on the ship, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna arrange that many dining carts. So I would just take note of it, and I would be like, all right, well, and I would look at like whatever the room is that can like you know lock the doors, and I would preemptively just be ready to do that. Um, for I'm loving the idea up. that you were prepared to blue Raja whoever comes through the back door, master of silverware. I mean, Nai, could you make an animals roll, please? Whoa. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I'm excited. <laughs> Clearly got pets on I the I got ship. a 13. Yeah. Yeah, so like plus five. <laughs> so you're in the lab and you hear something fall over, something quite small and low down to the ground. And as you okay. scooch down, you can see this kind of cat-sized lizard thing. You had me at lizard. <laughs> Longer back legs than front legs, and it kind of scurries behind one of the cupboards. Hmm. I would like to see. Can I reach out and pull like a like a? like a snack or something i don't know you you've, you've done a, a beautiful job on your animals roll so yeah naturally i have lizard food on me <laughs> all times i carry a pack a pouch of mealworms on me at all times i wouldn't put it past you actually yeah no nai has done that in real life yeah, as i was saying in the game myself, in the third person <laughs> that i have uh yeah i would like to kind of just you know kind of do that thing and like do the the waggly fingers with the so this yeah, little head nice. kind of pops around the corner again and looks at you and the food you're holding and it sort of trills slightly this can oh. I've got to completely change my character now because I want to be all about this lizard I'm so happy <laughs> right. oh. let's, uh, let's ask the chat to name it oh, we had no. great success lizard on the previous game face. <laughs> I, I'm I'm voting for. Thank you, Bolo, for the sub. But yeah, uh, I'm just going like to bring it over. Okay, so it comes part of the way towards you and then backs away again. Uh, judging by its behaviour, it looks like it's protecting something. Ah, okay. I would call. I would like not out of character in character what is this is this a normal organism to be found on a ship is this it's not something you'd normally find on a ship or... no okay it's not this like an normal. infestation kind of thing it's okay actually with a role like that it's a subaliran igwa bunny ah of course of course oh. of the igwa of the igwa bunny they're, genus, they're not course, that yeah. uncommon in the Sobelier Republic. They're quite popular as pets. Mm -hmm. hmm. Using my own intuition, I'm going to presume that's a nest back there or some kind of thing it wants to protect. So I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a little peek, but I'm not gonna like stick my hands in there or anything. Like where it's kind of guarding, I'm just gonna kind of do the little like like, you know, when you're standing behind someone who's taller than you and you do the tiptoes, like, kind of peek around their shoulder because you don't want to be rude to be like, get the fuck out yeah, of Yeah, there's a vent in the floor 
Okay. Uh, and it's kind of wedged open slightly, like it's been pushed through. You can't okay. quite see what's inside it, but the creature yeah. moves to block the entrance to the vent as you go round there. Okay. Well, I'm going to... I'll take out all the mealworms I have, like a, a couple handfuls, and just kind of pour them. Don't ask why the professor has mealworms in his pocket. I just pour They're them They're a healthy and nutritious snack when you're thinking. Of course, yeah. Um, just kind of places them there. And he, he'll, he'll leave this animal be for now. Uh, it, if it's defending something. As you back away, gonna... it, it trills again and runs forward and chomps up a huge mouthful of these mealworms. You can see as it runs forward that it's quite thin probably thinner than a healthy one would be okay um i would like to do something but i'm happy to let other people talk because i've been talking for a little bit i will say though I, he will go over to there's an intercom system isn't there in the ship yeah he just wants to go over press the button and says i would like several units of mealworms and then just <laughs> with no context just across the entire station like no tact whatsoever and I, uh, the, the Marcus and Narcy would be like oh, what have I done and then, he would, and then he would like to science but I imagine that's a role to science so. okay so Marques what, what are you going to be doing so far uh, Lee and Pat's characters have gone down to the cargo slash launch bay as the weakest point in the ship, but also the place where there's a surprise fighter pilot, fighter jet. Uh, I would like to make my drink a double. <laughs> Happily, you've drunk just enough to top it up with a full shot. And I ponder what have I just done in a, a fit. <laughs> So you're heading into the Sobelia Republic. This is... A... We've made the jump, or...? Well, no, you haven't hit jump space yet. But what part of the Republic do you think you'd like to go for? Um, do well, you have a plan, or is it just, let's just go there, they're kind of cool? Well, like, let's get away from Nightfall. And, um, I mean, I think that uh, we were in C6, you right? Were. And we can, well, we can jump to any of them because we can jump to, right? Yes. Okay, let me look at the gazetteer. What's their color in the gazetteer? Bright pink. Bright pink. In the gazetteer. Okay. So you've got Naptosh. Naptosh. Which is the cybernetics place. Not that. I don't like those. Kua'uot. Oh, that one, you have to cover your face, which would be perfect for both me and... Uh, Ex-military... Uh, yeah. Yep. Hawa, yeah. But the atmosphere is poisonous. Oof. Okay, and our third choice... Uh, you've got fast. Oh, it's the Yeet into the Sun. The Yeet into one. the Sun world, yeah. And then there's the capital. Oh. Let's not forget, Subalir oh. Prime. Um, although they are at war, they are quite interested in buying things like whatever they can get their hands on. And they're a very industrial I'm... planet. Were they at war with... The Yunnan Empire. Seems like everybody at this point. <laughs> no, that's the only people Yunnan are actually at war with. Nobody likes them, but Sobelir <laughs> are the only people they're at war with directly. I feel that could be maybe even more of an incident if I was to go there. So you want to avoid there and you want to avoid um, Yeet into the Sun World. Yeah. So it looks but like Kua Uot which is the... Um, Where everyone has to hide their face. Everyone hides their face because the planet is incredibly rich in horribly toxic halides. And it's freezing Perfect. cold. Oh, my God. I, okay, this, this is terrible. Um, to C6, <laughs> we could make it to D7 or B7. What are those? Uh, they should be independent worlds. Hmm. Gotta get my map okay, up now. Okay, do, do we know which? Because you didn't circle Open. in red or amber, the ones that have alerts, so it's kind of complicated. To there are 
exclamation marks over some of the worlds on the Gazetteer that tell you whether they're a threat or Yeah, not. but not on the map. Oh, good point. Well made. Where's... It's really hard to cross-reference things. So what, so, are, so what are the two hex what? coordinates that we're looking at? So you're asking B? It's row 7, B and D. Bravo and Delta should be doable in two... Uh, in D, wait, what was the number? D7? So B7. Yes. Which one is it? B, you mean B8, B, I think it is, because yeah, it goes up. So B8 a D8. is Elec, oh, sorry, yeah, B8. which is um, a, a high-risk world, because there's currently a war going on there as well, but it's an on-planet world. They're xenophobic poor and um, currently engaged in a civil war, so you probably don't want to go there anytime soon. We could sum it with Torkoal. And what's um, the other one? And the other uh, one was D7, Delta, Delta, D8, sorry, Delta which is Torkel, which only has a population of 187, and they're violent um, barbarians fighting for their life in a reality TV show. <laughs> okay, I think uh, we're back to going to uh, Mask on Your Face place. Mask on Your They're Face, the... Toxic Halide World. Yay! Holy shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seems familiar to me. Er. It's just like back in Yunnan where I had to cover my ankles, except uh, this time it's everything. <laughs> my head canon is that, like, you're trying to decipher the ridiculous maths, because, like, it should be just a simple calculation, but, like, Kara just got bored and was like, I'll just add some extra bullshit, because this is taking too long or too short. Uh, one of the other things that we need to think about as we're about to head into sort of jump space and you're doing a jump of one because you're going to Thass is what you're going to do to train in that week. So, Well, what's the differential in gravity between where we were and where we're going? I've got to stop Just shutting came from that. a station. And, uh, so the station gravity was 0.9 mm -hmm. and gravity on FAS. Uh, we're going to Quawat. Oh, sorry, Quawat. Yes, that's right. So it's 0 0.7. Okay, 0 .7. it's not much of a difference. We'll be all right. You'll feel light and strong and quite athletic. Okay. And, you and you're, do. you're doing le leveling skills by training weeks sort yes. of yeah. yeah okay so you pick a skill oh, that you cool. want to train in as you go and we'll level it up as you train hell yeah i want to get better at piloting <laughs> all right so the farther out you get you've run all your safety checks pat you run your checks on your fighter lee you check the boarding safety there is some reinforcement on the inside of the um, gang, gangway, boarding gangway so it looks like anybody trying to break in here would get a little bit of a shock because it's thicker than standard for this type of ship so hardly surprising given that the previous owner was clearly some kind of drug dealer but security has been somewhat beefed up on this ship So after a couple of hours, you know for a fact that they know where you're going or the direction you're heading in. They can see that you're heading into the Sobolir Republic. They're less likely to follow you there because they're nightfall <laughs> and nightfall are pro Yunnan and Sobolir are anti Yunnan. So you've chosen a good direction to run in. They're unlikely to want to follow you that way. But they do have an idea that that's where you've gone. They don't necessarily know who you are, though. They might still think you're on the station because they don't know what ship you currently own because they're going based on um, Pat's career with the Rangers. And so they're looking for your Ranger scout ship. Which I swapped for my fighter. Which you swapped in your share for your fighter, yeah. So, Nye, what science did you want to do? Um, I was wanting to use the, the laboratory. I, I, I the the rationale that I have is that he probably was got to the lab, seen it's not bare, but like got a little bit of stuff. And I think he just kind of wants to do something to pass the time. Um, 
more so because it's out of habit rather yeah. than necessarily... I mean, the thing that's um, readily apparent to you is that this has been a production lab, not a research yeah. lab. This okay. has been a lab that people have used to make stuff, so it's more about throughput than it is about studying things. So it's going to okay. need some changes and some upgrades to kit to be able yeah, to turn yeah, it yeah. into a more effective lab for you. But you can sit down and start tooling away on the computer and like running simulations and stuff with no problems and that could okay. kind of be a part of your training regime okay yeah i like this uh, pat if you've um if you've finished showing us those swans which incidentally look sick someone in the chat asked for it i'm sorry <laughs> Wait, what? What? Why, why, why? someone in <laughs> chat said uh, judge wolf said pat have you been working out look at you yeah, showing oh, them yeah, guns of course off. i have <laughs> Like, has anybody got a vet? Because these swans are sick. Oh, right. Muscle structure. Ah. Hey. <laughs> Lee, what about you? You've um, you've kind of scoped the ship out for defensibility. Um, near as you can tell, unless they come in through the emergency hatch on top, mm. which would be difficult mm. to get to because that's also where the turret is based. Nice. So they'd be coming in towards the turret. The best access point is through the rear. Which is the, presumably the, the cargo. Which is the hangar bay, yeah. 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 A classic uh, attempt to enter through the rear. I'm familiar yeah. with the procedure. Uh, and I would say that we are looking pretty well protected. And I mean, so jump space takes a week. Once we're, yeah. once we're yeah. thoroughly in jump, jump space, I would be like, well, whatever's, whatever's happened, it's happened. Where are we jumping to, just for reference? I. Uh, qua, qua what? This will be the Republic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Well, I would probably just, you know, go over what Star I know about. Starboard is B. Well, low level is 7, so we will, I don't think we can have, like, much weapons with us. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the, I'll leave the, oops. Well, I'll I mean, yes, yeah, so I would, I will, uh, I will look oh up God, what I know I about Kuat of the Sobeli Republic. And uh, I would probably chill, and in my spare time, I am training uh, my melee skill with my cutlass. Oh, I'll spar with you. Hell yeah. Uh, actually, Pat, at law level 7, you could take the cutlass. It's other stuff you have to leave behind. Oh, so I have to leave this bad boy <laughs> Yes, you have to leave that bad boy. Uh, you can take bladed weapons, stunners, and you are allowed to wear some armor. Okay. I'm um, assuming a vac suit doesn't well, count what? as armor. Uh, vac suit doesn't count as armor, no. Um, Fair enough. But you're quite Part safe with your armor. Oh, hang on. Tell a lie. Armor that is banned is... Um, everything up from mesh. Mm. So you're looking at like things that look like armor. If it doesn't look like armor, you're safe. Right, so like if I'm wearing a cloth that's been made to look like clothing, I'm good. That's fine, yeah. Um, uh, you're not allowed firearms. You're not allowed... You know, they don't, they're not super happy with people carrying weapons. But the only things that are banned are shooters, basically. They don't like firearms. Um, is there anything that people want me to train in? I'm kind of happy with whatever like i'll probably just do animals unless anyone needs me to be better at something no um just because that's me <laughs> um, I, I like it it's you it's very appropriate the the real question because i'm i'm torn between you know gunnery and advancing my uh my pew pewing skills but the real question here is what the marcass is going to train in <laughs> So over to you, Ferro. Um, what's the Marquess going to train in? What are you going to do in the run up to jump space and the time well, in jump space? I've already started pretty well with contemplating my terrible life choices and making it a double. So I'll be training Carouse. Hey, brilliant, marvelous! The and the, there and might be like um, maybe one night or two. There might have been some drunken soppy karaoke that you've had to endure through hawaii is actually super down for it she's making up for lost time <laughs> maybe I, I teach her dancing a bit because that's a bit robotic like you probably learned to like dance with like yeah. so much like distance yeah 
I think we did like actually... square dances, like group <laughs> square dances. Yes. But but you're not allowed to make physical contact. You kind of yeah. like every time oh, yeah. you get close, you have to like back away from oh, no, each like, other. Oh, uh, like the Marcus is so sloppy at that point. She's kind of barely dance. like almost grinding on you at that point. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is a different kind of dance. <laughs> <laughs> the songs are like, do not grab our, your our partner. Breath it's smells impure. like strongly of clamato, though. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think my character is uh, too shocked by this, considering that uh, from what I hear, food in the Yan'an Empire is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> it's, it's kind of bland. I, I've got this mental image of like your Nan Square dances now, like, don't grab your partner <laughs> by the hand, because that would be impure if you did. Touching elbows is the only thing that's allowed. All right, and only so if you're wearing full elbow covering clothes. You go into jump space and you spend a week getting to know the ship, tooling around, having a look at the rooms, picking out your bedrooms, you know, really important details when you're flat sharing or spaceship sharing with a bunch of acquaintances rather than friends at this stage. So you've got a choice. There are... Mm -mm -mm. seven staterooms on the top floor four staterooms on the lower floor they're all about the same size oh one of the staterooms on the top floor isn't a stateroom sorry it's the the kitchen oh, there, is, so there was one that was way better there, there is one that is better appointed than the others and I, I take it the robot put my suitcases in that one well, technically, no, they wouldn't have put it in there because they're thinking, oh, that'd be the professor's room. Right. Which which rooms would be closest to the lab? Uh, the ones the on lower the lower ones, deck. Like, yeah. You, you, Whereas yeah. it's the rooms on the upper deck, one of the rooms on the upper deck that's closest mm. to the cockpit that is the nicest room. Yeah, no, the professor is going to stay in the, the room that is as close to the lab as possible, which obviously is just where everyone is closest in the direction of lab. That's all he's... And he literally oh. only goes there to sleep. <laughs> he's you like, know, like, okay. the, the mark is going to be, like, troubled by the, like, oh, there's no wait staff. Might have to get some. Um, could, um, could someone help me with the luggage? Uh, sure. Why not? My character like puts down the knife she was uh, sharpening, or <laughs> some other antisocial trait that she was, you know, doing off screen. Like you know, the toothpick comes out, falls onto the floor. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're definitely going to need a steward. <laughs> <laughs> she helps you uh, carry them in. She's like, "Wow, really? This is so light. You could just do this yourself. I thought this was something heavy." Oh, this one's heavy. Okay. I got so many bags. Oh my god. Basically, like, you know that in space balls, like they're princes, like all our luggage? That's that's a situation there. <laughs> oh god. Am I am I uh the off brand Han Solo from space balls now? <laughs> with oh with the virginity alert. <laughs> Amazing. So, Knight, over the week, um, I'm assuming you want to sort of check in on your little lizardy friend. Yes. That's that's my animal training. All right. Well, um, you got really, really good roll on your initial animal roll. So over time, you managed to coax it out more and more until it will come to you and sort of look up at you. It seems quite intelligent, about as intelligent as a puppy. Okay. Actually, a, a quick, dog rather than a puppy. Quick question. What... What is the highest a skill can be in Traveller? I don't know, because that would but imply... But it's higher, it can be higher than three. Like, yeah. it, it, like, technically, like, usually people think, like, oh, it counts up to, like, hexadecimal values, so, like, 15. Yeah, that is but true. But technically, you can go higher than that, and, like, well, go no, past just, F. Higher than three is all I was hoping. Yeah, yeah, higher I don't want than to three, spend definitely. Time I mean, and it's like, 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 like Vera says, um, they use this weird hexadecimal thing where once your skill goes above nine it starts going into letters so the level above nine oh. is actually a so it's zero to 15 okay that, that's fine i just wanted to make sure i wasn't um wasting no no you're safe okay 
So over time, this thing is gradually more and more willing oh, to come but, uh, out to you. Wait, wait a second. If you're already at three, it's going to take you like 32 weeks to get trained in like level four. But, but as I said, that's why I was like, if anyone has any other suggestions, I can do something. So if but. you're like something that you have a zero or one are the best ones to train because it's eight weeks to train. I mean, I, I, I can if you want. I said that I, I, I don't really mind. Just say. No, I, I don't know. Unless anyone has anything specific, I'm probably just going to go for it. But I, am, I'm, I, I think I'm not pulling this out of my head. I think, I think that's sort No, of no, I, I, I totally believe you. As I said, like, I, if, I, I have lots of skills. I, I'm not fussed which one goes up or down. So I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, for, for the scope of this campaign, you may not be looking at leveling up something that's at three already. But not a lot of things are going to level up much anyway, I shouldn't think. Okay, so a week later, you pop out of jump space, your jump bubble collapses, and you slow down to subluminal speeds. And away in the distance, you can see a tiny speck of light that is the star around which Quawat sits. Uh, I unassuming bluish tint to the star and the planet itself is a kind of muddy brown yellow and green color from the atmosphere uh, there's a, a lighter pale green coating that sits at the poles and stretches about a third of the way down to the equator on the planet it's quite small and as you see it approaching on the screen, you start to get signals bouncing back and forth between you and the starport. Just initial who's there, what's there kind of signals at first. And then the closer you get, you start picking up signal telemetry. You get radio, you get tight beam laser communication and that kind of stuff coming through. So, um, Uh, Lee, you're kind of our pilot at the minute. So as you drop out mm. of jump space and you start picking up these signals, eventually when you're only sort of a day out, you start to get the audio come through. Uh, greetings, unknown vessel. This is Quawat Landing. Please state the nature of your visit and your intentions. All right, so I would, uh, you know, I'd sort of like look around uh, the group without turning on the audio and be like, um, so okay. officially we're here for research purposes, right? Wait, what do they trade in everything else? Exports, holidays, what's? Halides. Halides, um, what's? Group seven gases on the periodic table. And I'm We're like, buying that. We're here right. to buy that. We're here to buy halides. All right. Uh, and I would uh, just sort of turn ch on. And uh, we are. Is it's not a safari? Do we have a safari ship or a yeah. lab ship? Okay. So it's from a, the outside, it looks like it is a safari. It's a an upgraded safari ship. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would say uh, that. Uh, your character's a doctor, right, uh, Nye? Or do you go by professor? Uh, he's both, I would assume. Uh... And I would say, ah, oh, yes, the good doctor is uh, here to uh, purchase some halides and uh, eventually uh, take in the sights. So you've got about a sort of four or five hour bounce back, even on not a not four, yeah, four or five hours at first, but gradually the time gets shorter on your laser comms. And you have this chatter go back and forth. And by the time the planet is occupying much more of your view screens, you can start to see the starport in orbit around it. You can see- I was see... about to ask, is it in orbit? Because we need the gear. <laughs> yeah, the starport is in orbit around the planet. The planet is banded with these green and yellow and brown clouds of bromine, iodine, chlorine, which is just natural in the atmosphere and they fall as this kind of frozen rain. Uh, the starport here is 
really quite decent. It's well equipped because almost as many people live on the station as live planet side. Uh, so about half the population is planet side and slightly more than half planet side, slightly less than half station side. So you've got somewhere in the region of like 70,000 people living on this station. So it's a big old space station in orbit around this dirty little mud ball planet. Uh, by the time video comms are online, everybody is wearing a mask over there. Yeah, so, when, when, so yeah, by the time the video comms come on, I am going to have a uh, mask on, fuck it, mask on. So the, the Gazetteer, by the way, the Ren Space Gazetteer, it, it does also count as an in-character document. So if it's written on there, it's considered to be knowledge that you could look up. It doesn't have to be common knowledge, but this document but they, it's is on the an computer. in-game document that you could look up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm masked up. Uh, and I would say greetings. We're here to request docking with your station. Uh, affirmative. Uh, it's an interesting ship name you've got there. We can give you docking privileges in Docking Bay 9. Very well then. We'll be Unless on you want to dock on the outer ring, which would be slightly cheaper, but a longer journey to get into the station. I kind of look around at the audio music and I'm like, are we really hurting over docking fees at this point, or...? I mean, it's her money. <laughs> how she spends it's up to her. Well, I don't have a cost. Like, nobody told me how much it costs, so I don't know. Do I know, like, like do they tell us how much it is, or are they just... Like... Uh, that is something I should know and did not think about. But I it assume... is well within your budget, Vero. All right. All right, so um, I would say take Docking Bay 9 then. Excellent. So Docking Bay 9, pad 4, uh, will start to send you automated telemetry as you get closer. And true to their word, as you get closer, automated telemetry starts coming through to assist you in your landing. So one more pilot roll at plus 3 on top of whatever you've got from the automatic stuff. All right. Let's so hope I, I, don't I think I've been training in pilot, and I, I would maybe ask that I could uh, give this one a shot. Certainly. Um, so, all right. So, over the week, is bringing something from zero to one uh, possible? Not in a week, no. Never mind. All right. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I would watch you do it then. All right. And do I get any bonus from the ship? You mentioned just automated stuff. I don't know the ship's uh, stats. From the ship, your ship does have a computer. And your computer rating is it's difficulty modifier minus two. So you'd be looking for a difficulty six. Okay, so it's not going to change the modifier in my roll, it's just going to change the DC. Okay. Yeah. All right. But you've got, cool. so effectively, you've got the equivalent of like plus five on your roll now. I roll an 11. Yeah, that's a plus five DM. Yeah. So you kind of pop this thing in to a handbrake turn, swirl it in, point the end, point the nose back out towards the exit again, pass through the the shield on the station, and park it up in bay four. And you're down, you've landed. Gravity on the station is the same as gravity on the planet. It's set to point seven. It's based on grav plating rather than spin. And the starport here has a Traveller's Aid Society and a research station. Which is where most of the people that live here work. How convenient All for right. our uh, dear scientists, pal. I turn around and say, so I'm assuming we're here to establish some sort of cover with the good doctor purchasing halides and schmoozing with the researchers yeah anything to s escape nightfall hmm yeah sure sure yeah I, yeah i could buy some haloids so your ship has landed um you've got access to 
the station now. You can get off, you can look around. Kind of over to you, uh, Vero. I'm gonna cover my face. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. I'm gonna ask if um, it would be too much to ask of the professor to go on top of the allies to bias the kits that the locals are wearing, especially for uh, SME. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, trivial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Child's play. Before uh, we get in yeah, and yeah. come back with them and then we'll go out. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll cover my face. Uh, I'll wait until we docked. I'll jump off. There's not like a, like a oh. ventilator cellar. <laughs> just waiting. Hello! I have yeah, right, a... Right, 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 take it as like on the station, they yes, have okay. what you need to go on the planet. Yeah, That's I mean, it's, it's, it's a big station. You're you're yeah, looking okay. at 70,000 people living on this station. So a station. like a okay. town that would have that many people, it's going to have a range of shops and amenities. Yeah, buy us there. what the locals are wearing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll. Right. I'll and probably the station is like, uh, be aware if you're going planet side, you need this protection and this protection and like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he'll uh, he'll wander through his face covered. Uh, he will. Uh, do I need to make a roll or can I just? I'm not gonna like stare at people's faces, but or like not faces. Be honest, I'm not gonna stare at people. But do I, can I see what? Oh yeah, it's not difficult to see what people of, are wearing. People are. Yeah. are so the Sobele Republic, the pop star. They, they, this is where they they tend to go for the side fastening clothes. A lot of their stuff would be weather dependent. They they like fine materials in fairly monochrome colours, but with a splash of an accent colour. Um, everyone on this station as well has their face covered by a mm -hmm. mask at all times. It is considered a bit of a a local taboo to show your face because down on the planet. Um, it's insta death if you go out without a rebreather or something on. Mm -hmm. And the another obviously none of them are wearing rebreathers, but are any of them like like is there a brand that locals are using more, or is it just a rebreather standard kind of thing? I think that's what. Well, on the station, they're not Ronnie, wearing rebreathers. Um, on the station, it's just like plain face covering. No, I, I understand that part. That, that's the bit I'm a bit confused with what Vera's asking me. Are, are you she asking wants you to go in get like space kits? Primark and get you some clothes. Yes. Oh, clothes. So that you can blend okay, in apologies. more. Like, we, we, like our, our mission here is to not get detected. Just okay. yeah. pick I, whatever is the fashionable thing and okay. get us that. I, I, yeah, no, I, no, I, no, I would problem. accompany the doctor. I would accompany the doctor because in part because I don't want him to get snatched in case somebody is trailing us or is aware of our movements. Yep, and um, you're a spy. Who better to go and buy yeah, so um, I'll subtle casually, clothes with? I'll casually be with the doctor and I'll be like, oh, yes, doctor, let's, let's ass assess the local fashion. I'm just okay. gonna like you know like check out the space internet here and try and figure out like the what's this season's monochrome you know <laughs> so you step out into the station and most of the people here are Sobelir republic natives there's not a lot of people from other polities nearby um, there's not a lot of reason why people would come here unless they were deliberately buying halides and a lot of that is dealt with in sort of bulk buys and remote freight so you've got more freight companies than you've got nationals of any of the other polities. And they kind of do stand out. There's a lot of uniforms, big coveralls, oranges, greens, blues, things that say, hi, we're a freight shipping firm kind of stuff for the obvious traders. And Lee, you see them getting bilked, mm. as is done in every port, in every place, in every system. They're coming here, they're going to the local bars, they're going to the local brothels, they're getting what they can get, and they're getting done for it at every turn. Sobelir does buy in to the Tuolox Bank credits um, and won't take money from the Yunnan credit system. So fortunately, coming from where you've been, you've currently got Tuolox Banking credits, so you're safe on that front. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you pop into 
Secunduat, which is a clothing store that they have nearby. And it's off the peg stuff, sure. And it's not the most finely made equipment and clothing in the world. But you can pick up a bunch of clothes, take them back onto the ship. And pretty much every outfit either comes with an accessory face mask for most jackets for instance would come with an accessory face mask that matches the jacket but you've also got customizable mask printing services in little vending machines where you can upload pictures it is actually possible in one of them to upload a picture of your face onto your mask so that you can have the bottom part of your face printed onto your mask Hmm, that feels like a questionable decision. Do I look around and see anybody wearing those? Yeah, there are a few people wearing those, but it, again, it looks like the, the jumpsuit brigade are wearing those rather than the locals. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid that one. Uh, and yeah, just pick us up some nice options and, you know, uh, bring them back to the ship. I'd say that, and I'm looking, is anybody like taking particular notices or are we just like another pair of rubes to be built, like, you know, more tourists? For the yeah, at this point, you, you're just looking like traders or tourists more than anything else. People aren't really yeah. giving you a second look. Uh, it's station time. It's sort of early afternoon. Uh, so there's there's not a lot of excitement and nightlife going on. Food vendors are selling things to eat mostly in the form of processed blocks of textured proteins um, noodle products that are textured proteins looks like food is something they don't have in great supply here mm. gotta love those that textured proteins selling. though say again sorry Gotta love those textured proteins, though. Oh, yeah. A little bit of textured yeah. proteins. And then the, the, a lot of the, the vendors near the shipyard, near the docking bay, are the ones for these bulk halide jobs. So they're not selling, like, little samples. They're, they're giving away little samples. But what they're selling is um, cubic meters of compressed gases in huge containers that are kept on the outside ring of the station and you fly out you pick it up and you fly it where it needs to go a lot of the time it's bolted to the outside of a ship it doesn't even come inside your ship when you're flying with them so your ship is actually quite unusual in the docking area because it's bigger and more luxurious than a lot of the ones that are there in the docking bay with you you've got ships that are Clearly things like scout ships and far traders and free traders. These are ships that belong to people who are going here and arranging for big trades rather than conducting them. And then a big freighter will come in, pick up a million cubic meters of chlorine and fly it where it needs to go. Mm. And the Travelers Aid Society Lounge, which you're not members of. I don't think any of you got TAS membership, did you? You're not members of the TAS Lounge, but outside the TAS Lounge, there are a number of computer screens which are individually accessible, but also like a big departure lounge spectacular with loads of trade deals up for grabs on there. Probably trade deals that are available more inside and for less, these are the ones where they couldn't get people to take the job uh, sooner. Are they back with our clothes yet? Or yeah, where are this, we? I've just given them a sort of lowdown on what they yeah, see we, as they go return, out, get the clothes and come yeah, back. We, we see the stuff, we return with the clothes, and we're like, yeah, here's the local fashion. Uh, if we wear this, we won't really stand out. And also, there seems to be some opportunities to pick up some halides. Uh, which is what we said we were going to do. So what what's the plan more broadly once we pick this up? Are we just running in no particular direction? Where are you headed? Well, first of all, we should load the news. Sure. What's on the news? Okay, you can pipe the news into your ship. Um, first news is about the war. Uh, the Yunnan aggressors 
trying to force their way through the independent systems and into the Great Barrier um, to try and claim territories that are known by all parties to be Sobolia Republic sovereign territory. There's um, your traditional, has someone found a wacky ancient structure? Who knows? Usually the answer is no. Uh, but the news is fairly quiet. There's nothing particularly extravagant going on. Down on the planet, the the weathers seems to take up almost half of the news. It's talking about uh, freezing chlorine coming in from the northern polar region, sweeping hey, uh, down over the habitation. Doc, well, freezing chlorine is that different from like normal cold on uh, you know other planets? He's a cockerhead. Like, do, you, do are you referring to like? the difference between frozen chloride and frozen H2O. Probably. Understood. Don't touch frozen chloride. It will hurt a lot. That's what I wanted to know. Cool. We yes. should really not go to this planet. It sounds horrible. I think we can conduct the business from the space court. But once we've conducted our business, I mean, where are we taking this to sell and why? Yeah. I do think I interrupted Vero unintentionally, though. I think she had something to say. It's fine. What did you want to go for, Vero? I have to... I have to... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Um, and that, that's just the news that's showing in Quawat. I was just looking at the news. I wanted to look specifically if there's anything with my name. No mention on the news here about any of you. Nothing about the shipyard. Uh, no mention of it even really being considered. Like in the Republic of Sobilier, how likely am I to be known? Quite unlikely. Okay, I mean, you might show up if you went swanning around here telling everybody that you were the Marquess of Ficor. Mm -hmm. That would be vulgar. And there's only 200,000 people in the system altogether. But if you go out looking like one of them and not telling anyone who you mm -hmm. are, you're unlikely to be recognised. Okay. Your um, fame is um, further towards the rim than that. So, science question that Nai doesn't know the answer to, well, kind of, but I don't know it very well. Ooh. What, what, what would I or anyone else be able to do with a ton of haloids outside to just sell it to someone who does know what to do with it? Like, can we actually? It was a cover, just so we. Yeah, could I dock. assumed it was, but everyone kept talking about it seriously. So I, I now I'm a bit confused. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do. With I didn't think it's like industrial. And yeah. like all we can say is we can like, oh, what are your prices? Oh, too much. We're not interested. Well, yeah, it's I a just, cover. I, yeah, well, no, I understood that. I, I just yeah, we were talking about it so seriously. I was like, wait, am I meant to do something with these? Because yeah, I don't no. know what these things. But I do. I like the use. Well, I mean, unless Pat or Lee, you have an idea. Are we having why this we conversation? Those? Are we having a con this conversation in person? Oh God, no, 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 no. The professor like, like, would never like, admit that he what, doesn't okay. know what to do. But with in something. character, my character would provide a reasoning. But I mean, I, the player, don't give a shit either way. Yeah, I think we look at the the traveler, um, you know, uh, stuff to to do here. Uh, lineup. The, the main and, reason uh, for coming here was a, a fire break, wasn't it? Because yes. yeah. your nan yeah. allies aren't going to come into this space looking for you. So by exactly. flying into this space, you could then leave in any direction you like, and they're going to really struggle to track you. Yeah, the only thing like so we like, might as well do a job in the right direction, though. If if uh, there's anything you know on the board. So do you like what degree of this conversation is in or out of character at this point? I think I am canonically uh, postulating that we should grab a job and go in that direction and just you know further differentiate yeah, ourselves. Yeah, I'll say from I'd agree. Additionally, if anybody gets access to some very basic records and they notice that we claimed we were here to buy halides and then we didn't 
it will just be an oddity, well, but we should, the further I, we you know deviate what? from our... I'll take the professor with me. I'll go to the Allied shop and ask for their price and then tell them it's too too much. We're not interested. But that's not going to appear on a shipping manifest. All it's going to appear is we arrived, stated we were here to buy, didn't buy, and that looks didn't suspicious. Didn't buy because the price wasn't right. That won't be listed on a shipping manifest. It doesn't okay, matter either some. way. Can I, if we can I if we're going in a in a direction that needs halides, uh, we can, can just buy can halides ask, and go. Can there. We can buy one halide and dump it into space. Um, no, that's a waste of material. Okay, I was just gonna ask. Mm -hmm. um, can I get some mealworms for the lizard? But we can we can just say I buy some of them. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't need to. I think that's like that. three credits. <laughs> We'll swing by for the mealworms, yes. Yeah, pet well, shop, I imagine. That's, that's yeah. fine. That's all, I mean, that's all the professor needs to do. I'm I'm fine to do it. It doesn't matter that much as long as we, yeah, keep moving and find someone else to go. But what is our long-term objective here? Why, we've we've thrown off your nan off of you, but where are you intending to go after that? Well, presumably she's hoping to uh, escape the Yanan. Uh, her, her duties uh, to be the Yanan envoy. And I'm hoping to escape the Yanan in general. So it's not that we have a specific direction towards something, it's that we have a specific direction away from something. But well, do, do you want to take a look at what jobs are available and see if there's anything that yes. tickles yes. your fancy? Yes. That's always not really You can do. do that from the comfort of your ship and make a call on whether there's anything you want to actually go for there. I very much do. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, oh wow, thanks, Only Play Wizards. 10 tier 1 subs. Nice. Holy sh. That's incredible. Thank you so much. All right, so we're, we're calling up jobs that are available. So, you've got your fairly standard passenger requests. Not a lot of them. Um, so, does anybody have broker, carouse, or streetwise? I do at all three. <laughs> Which this one do you want to roll? Gig. I have the latter uh, two. Carouse is my best. Okay. Are you going for so high go passengers for or low passengers? Well, it depends what we can take on. Like, No, we don't have a steward. We're, we have to go basic. That is true. Um, so you could take on passengers. There's, or, there's plenty does anyone of passenger has requests. There's... The Freight requests. Sorry, say again. Does anyone on the team have the scale steward? Yes, uh, I do have steward. Okay, so we can go to for I passengers. Good. Okay, so you've got freight, you've got passengers, you've got mail. Which one of those do you want to go for? It depends on their trajectory, I think. Uh, okay, so what you're looking for is someone that's going within two jumps of where you are. Or something. And... Quawat is D7, so it's that one. Okay. So you've got people who want to go one jump to one jump down. That's uh, Rimwood. Up is Corewood. That way hey. is Rimwood, and that way is Spinwood. Sounds right. In terms I of could galactic never directions. learn those. Spinwood You're going to have left. to call the X for me. North, south, east, and west, basically. Okay. On the uh, map. Can you tell me to which X they're going? Because yeah. that makes So there are passengers going in any of those directions. Um, nobody is going west from your current location, or rather northwest, because that would take you back to shipyard, where presumably you don't really want to go. So yeah, ruling out a trip that way, you've got. I think two axes east of us at F8 or F7. Yeah, I meant west, sorry. West is the way you don't want to go. So you've got people looking to go north, northeast, south, east. 
Is it South Yanan Empire? No, Yanan Empire is way up north. Oh, I am. Oh, yeah, no, duh. Wow, I'm fucking oblivious. Sorry. So you can pick a direction and you will find passengers wanting to go that way. However, if you want to look at sort of specific passenger jobs, a lot of them are just standard foot passenger gigs. But there are... Do you have like high, like luxury, whatever they're called? Yeah, there are some luxury passengers, not very many. You've only got sort of two luxury passengers. But there are three passenger jobs that kind of jump out at you. Sorry, two passenger jobs and one freight job that jump out at you. You've got one passenger job, which is an archaeologist who's been sat on the station for weeks from his... Basically, when you look at the job, he's putting coordinates for a planet that's not there. And double-checking it, it's actually a location in the Great Barrier. So this guy is an archaeologist who wants to go into the Great Barrier because he thinks he knows where something is. So that's an option. There is a freight job, which doesn't look right because it's delivering. It's something that's smaller than a mail delivery, but being delivered all the way across into the consensus of Atia, two jumps away in F. Seven, which is Cnaeus. So they're delivering a package to Cnaeus that seems to have a price tag attached to it that is the equivalent of several million tons of shipping freight around. And the third one that stands out as unique and different is someone trying to book passage to Ren Ultima. Ren Ultima? Wait, where is that on the map? Ren Ultima is the unique station in the map. It's um, two down from the swirly red thing on the far side. It's yeah, the okay, circle with the it. lightning on it. It's the giant orbital super station that is all that's left of the Ren existence. Yeah. Circle with lightning. I, I'm looking... Next to the light looking. blue. It's... It okay. does, I don't think Call it has X lightning. numbers because I'm not going to find it. Uh, a, H, B, C, D, H7 e, F, G, or H8? H, H7 or H8, yes. Okay. It's the okay, last entry on the gazetteer. So what's an F7? F7 is... F7 is Cnaeus, I believe. So we could make we could make Cnaeus. I was about to vote Cnaeus, but... Mm. No, I'm interested by the can, archaeologist, but can, uh, it's not my thing. We can reach Caneos in a single jump, uh, right? Because we're jump two? Yep. So technically speaking, like this guy's been waiting for weeks. I feel like we could double tap. It, we, we could take a trip to Caneos and we could pick up the passenger. Um, yeah, because he's looking to go to A, B, C, D, E, F, 5. I mean, if you guys want to take him to F5, we could also just not take him to F5. So that's another two jump. If you, you could go to Cnaeus and then do a two jump Corewood to get to his weird ass location in the Great Barrier. I'm assuming oh, that... How much is he offering for that? Yeah. He is offering... Because usually it's like, what, if he's a high passenger, it's 10k per jump or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's offering 15k. For the jump. For a parsec? For the two parsec jump. A lot. Um, But he's also offering a further 8k to carry his research assistant and equipment. So he's offering 20k for a two parsec jump. For him, one assistant who can go in cold storage. He's happy for them to go in cold storage. So uh, do uh, do we have the equipment for low storage? On a safari ship, you do have some low berths. But then he can die. Okay. There is the risk um, of dying, yeah. But you've got a doctor. 
yeah i guess we could to take those two jobs back to back if the like the, the archaeologist is waiting and willing to wait for us to go to Gnaeus and then back to the belt so you could ping both of those jobs and interview for them i guess yeah, I mean, I'd talk to the guy. If he seems sus, uh, we could take him part of the way because if he's been waiting for weeks, then it sounds like he doesn't need everyone to take him part of the way. And this is kind of ass into nowhere. If there's more people driving to Canaeus, he might have better luck there. Yeah, they have a better starport there. I'm looking and they have a, yeah. a, a, a starport instead of B. So And a much bigger population. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we right. could offer them to, okay, we'll take you at least to Canaeus. Yeah, we'll take them to Canaeus. We can offer them that. Okay, yeah, so gonna, who's going to talk to the archaeologist? I will. Okay. I guess. And who's going to talk to the freight, the delivery for Canaeus? Or do you want to do both of them? I, I think I'm the one with the sort of skill for that. Yeah, yeah you're the talky-talky you're talky type. Yeah. All right. So which one do you want to do first? Mm, well, let's secure the newest job. Yep. So then we'll, I'll know what to offer to the archaeologist. Okay, so Kanea's job pops pops up on your view screen. It's... Make an investigation roll. I get it flush. Okay. Uh, either the image has been touched up so that the person doesn't look as rough as they might usually look or they're using some kind of avatar program to make them space photoshop yes yeah. I'm very familiar with that <laughs> I mean you probably use it yourself <laughs> yes a lot space facetune yes yeah You've got facetune turned up to max this guy's obviously doing the same thing Mm -hmm. uh, businessman he's wearing a pale brown suit uh, fastened down the left hand side he's got a beige mask over his face his hair is slicked back off the top of his head and he, he greets you when you communicate and says so good afternoon I understand you may be willing to take on our freight job Indeed. We've had a few problems with vendors in the past. A lot of the people who have pitched for the job haven't really been qualified to conduct the job to our satisfaction. We're concerned about safety and security for this transport. Uh, while we don't anticipate any trouble, we would rather that the people who perform the job for us are equipped to defend themselves. So um I'll I'll just like send them like this well send them just the specs of the ship and the fighter in there. Impressive. Um you seem more than well equipped to defend yourselves. I I am interested. Yes, most of the people who we've spoken to have been freighter drivers looking to make a bit of money on the side. What we're looking for is a trustworthy courier who will transport the package from here to our purchaser on Cnaeus with some alacrity and well if you want to like tr build some trust would you mind meeting up for a drink if you're on station that sounds like a fantastic idea well I do you have any uh, local bars to recommend Yes, there, there is a place that the freighters don't go to. A uh, little bit more of a local place. Um, it's called the Poison Chalice. So the name itself is a little bit of a turn off for mm -hmm. many coming this way. But it has a, a name that's storied in antiquity and we, we find it quite clever. So if you'd like to meet us there, should we say seven station time? Yes. Um no disrespect i'm a, um as a woman on my own uh drinking uh do you mind if i have one of um 
my security officers accompany me. No, that would be perfect. If we can see your security officer as well, that will just ease our comfort with selecting you for the role. I must say you have been the most promising person we've spoken to in three weeks. So I look forward to meeting with you, uh, Miss? Uh, call me Vim. Certainly, Vim. Uh, my name is Gannon. Oh, no. <laughs> well, he's everywhere. Of I course. I do want to say that I always, I, I don't always go to that Ganon. I think of Ganon from The Legend of Zelda, and then I remember the other Ganon, and I'm like, oh, right, okay, it's still bad, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind Just of bad. It's bad, different. And he breaks the call. Do you want to try calling the professor as well? Yeah. What time is it station time? The station time now is about 4 p.m. So you've got about three hours to kill. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to call like the professor until I've secured that one, because until I've secured that one, I don't know where I'm going. All right. Well, um, I'm going to go uh, see uh, Awa. And, uh, Say, so, yeah, Awa, I will need you to accompany me and show your guns. Well, I mean, not your your literal guns, but your guns to a bar. You got it. I figured that's what you meant. Considering, you know, the walls but on this But make sure planet. you don't, sh like, put the face masks on. You, you, but, you don't tell yeah. her who she's meant to be showing the guns off to, so she's just wandering like this. <clears throat> Huh. Just every like patron's like, yeah, they're, they're nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're just like, yes. I'm okay, sure some of you want to watch this. <laughs> just like some people are just like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Someone here is clearly interested in this. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she, she masks up and she's, she's ready to go. She had assumed that she would accompany you for security reasons because that's basically her job here. <laughs> So, All right, yeah, so you, you head out into the station a couple of hours later and you, you go through the sort of gaudy tourist trap bit of the station. It's not really tourist trap. This isn't a place tourists come mm. to. But you know what I mean? This is the, the, the roadside service station spectacular. Cheap beer, cheap company, cheap everything. And you move your way into more of the station where the researchers and the, the gas specialists might live. And there is a bar tucked away, the poison chalice. Appears to be mostly underground. So you make your way downstairs into the bar area. It's been, the walls have been covered in like spray rock. So it's been sprayed to look like you're inside uh, an asteroid or a rocky habitat or an underground cave or something. Uh, a few quiet drinkers sat at their tables. The A gentleman in the, the pale brown suit and beige mask is sat at one of the tables when you walk in. He appears to be wearing makeup now to touch up his appearance. Like, like out of habit, I'll like give him my hand. <laughs> The kiss. He, he, <laughs> like, he oh, kind of yeah. takes it and shakes it. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, and I, I think I meant a lot. Don't do this anymore. <laughs> Gannon Sussex, pleased to meet you. And you are. Fim. And your associate. Howa. Fim and Howa. Pleasure to meet you. Can I buy you a drink? Yes, of course. Thank you. Do you have a anything particularly that you'd prefer? Uh, Bloody Caesar, make it a double. Ah, an Uthan classic. Some sort of beer. <laughs> and he taps a few bits on his slate and waves it over at the bar. And a few minutes later, a tray of drinks arrives with a, a big tankard full of beer, uh, a tall, foul-smelling red mixture that looks like pure evil. 
and there's a celery and all those. Oh, of course, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. A and a, a small glass that of um, like a, a low brown liquid. So oh, I'm the clever one. Mine comes with a straw. <laughs> It is now That's where the I, I don't know if you've been from. here before, so <laughs> please do stop me if if I'm telling you what to do. But it's it's okay to to lift the drink to your face, use your hand to cover the lifting of the mask, drink, and then drop it down again. Um, I see you've gone for the straw, so you you know what's what. But yes, um, hello. My name is Gannon Sussex, and I represent a small group of investors. We are transporting a, a hard drive. It's an experimental hard drive that we need to get to Kneos. Um, obviously, once it gets there, it'll be picked up in the starport by our agent. Um, you'll receive half of your payment up front and half when you arrive and successfully deliver the product. We we are willing to prepare a, a bonus payment for security and confidentiality clauses. So um, do you think this is something that you'd feel able to do? Yeah, um, do you have any protocols in place to uh, identify person I should deliver this to? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, to be honest, it will it will seem to be me. Mm -hmm. Only deliver it to me. I, I may have a different name. But I will still be me. Understood. I'm going to, like, give a glance at Awa, like, sort of what are you thinking? She is stone-faced. Uh, she is putting on her professional military face. You get no read of her whatsoever. On the inside, she's like, this is sketch as hell. What the fuck? But on the outside, she's like... Okay. So she's not giving me anything, so... Um, so yeah, she's should, she's, should she's we... bodyguard mode right now. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to ask again, uh, shall we shake on it? You're, you are okay with physical contact? <laughs> of course you're Uthan. <laughs> I don't actually do that out loud. I think I and am, so he, he I reaches out a hand. I already shake as I'm like at first. So. Um, you notice this time that his hand before when you when you sort of held it out to him for him to kiss, mm -hmm. when you actually shake his hand properly, remembering the protocol, his hand mm -hmm. is slightly cooler than you're comfortable with and slightly clammier than you're comfortable with. Hmm. Well, you get any sort of read on that? He He might just have a low body temperature. He might just be slightly creepy. Okay. So, um, here is a hundred thousand credits up front. I will deposit directly into your account now if you have your slate ready. Uh, yeah, I would have like the professors, right? And literally 100,000 like that straight across into your account. There's another 100,000 at the far end and it's it's looking even more sketchy now. Because you don't pay 100,000 for anything. Mm -hmm. But my character has no conscience of value. That's the problem. That's very true. You're incredibly rich. Like, so if you pick up a job That's and somebody. this one looks good, you know, it's like, who's sketchy, who's not? It says, and are you able to collect the cargo now? Uh, well, uh, we have one other stop to make, but. Um, oh, it's it's entirely you portable. You can start loading it. Yes. Uh, there's no need, no need. It's, it's right here. And he reaches down next to him and he hands over like a 
triple size briefcase. So it's about the length of a briefcase, slightly longer, but triple the thickness. This black box with um, big silver corner plates on it that appears to be magnetically sealed. Are you expecting trouble within this station? Not within the station, no. Very well. The station we'll our, uh, should be secondary. thoroughly oblivious. You say these words, and I hear them, and they sound great. Um, I would suggest you fasten it somewhere nice and secure. I'm going to take this to the ship before I resume duties. Right. Well, would you I, care for another can... drink then, Ms. Vim? While your partner takes the cargo back to the ship? I'm gonna yeah, I, think I've, I think I've been... Feranik was like, no, get the fuck out. But um, I, I think I've been missing company and drinking. And like that's all I've been doing. So I've kind of have an habit. So I will have a second one. <laughs> Ma'am, would you like me to uh, take this back to the... Yeah, yeah. Right, Vera, can you make you a know how carouse to roll? Yes. I carouse. Wait a second. It's not going. Oh, it did. Uh, flush. Okay. He does not carouse. His conversation is decidedly stilted and really predictable. Like after after the second drink you start to get the feeling that you know what he's going to come out with next because it's like he's going through an instruction manual on Mm -hmm. how to do small talk with a person. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's like my dad. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to push push this further. It's like, I'm going to ask him for a dance. I think he didn't ask me. (laughs) I'm skedaddled. (laughs) Go on then, make another carouse roll. Again, flush. He turns you down. He says, uh, much as it would be a, a privilege to dance with someone such as yourself, unfortunately, I, am, I must decline at this time because this is not entirely the venue for it. And I don't wish to draw attention to either of us, particularly given the nature of our business deal. He only knows the robot. Yes. So, Lee and Nye, is there anything you guys want to do while they're out drinking? Uh, I feel like I'm back to the ship and I'm like, so this is called a mealworm because you have it for your meals or because the animals have it for their meals? Why not both? And I kind of like put my hands on my head and I'm like, so your planet, they just, yes, yes, I see you. You're from a planet where they need to grow worms to eat, yes. See, on things are a little different in New Viridium, but uh, oh. it sounds fascinating. I'll have to try one. Sometime. No, 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 no. I, I was very much excluded for only eating mealworms in company. Uh, yes, they, ah. they thought it was very strange. Yes. And do you just enjoy the flavor or just the texture? Well, they're the, 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 the most logical thing to be eating. They have high protein and they're easy to fit in your pockets. So but why would you why... eat something that's already dead like a shaped protein bar with all of the contents packed in technologically ah but you see many places have pet stores they don't always have stores that sell protein bars (laughs) i like i like rub my head i'm like oh i see but that is certainly adaptive Yes, I spent. I, I I wrote a thesis, a thesis <laughs> on the most uh, 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 bleh, the most direct way to get protein into your diet. Yes. So, uh, Lee, I'm assuming you're delivering these mealworms to him in the lab. I mean, I'm probably just like you know chilling well, he, with Nye and the. I'm probably chilling with Nye's character in the lab. Yes. Well, okay, so I'm going to ask you to make an investigation. Role. Well, I, I was I was going to say if you go to the lab, Kurt Kurt Kurt's going to be like, oh. Thank you. And then, like, as soon as you try to get in the door, he's going to do that, like, thing where it's like, uh, 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 uh. I find like, this standing in the way, sus- like, uh, find this incredibly suspicious, but I only roll a six. Is that going to be enough? It's not, no. And I'm, just, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, so what do you have going on in the lab? 
it's not quite much now. Uh, perhaps if we gain the funds, I could splurge a little bit. It, it, it's mostly for creating uh, factory-based products. So you could oh, produce some chemicals. I could probably I'm, whip I'm up some familiar drug. with this. Yeah, familiar with a few popular chemicals that we could uh, really get us in some party scenes. Oh, I'd be happy to help oh, you acquire them. I know all about. Yes. I uh, I know all sorts of people involved in acquiring things. Just letting me know what you need, and I'd be happy to deliver it. Uh, I mean, I can make you drugs. I it's rather oh. simple if you oh, like. They're, they're not for me, darling. I'm just saying. Oh, it's not an issue. Uh, what I will say, I mean, if I had the money, I could make this into a proper lab. Uh, mm, yes. Now, what's lacking at the moment? Could you show me around? I don't think I've been in this part of the ship. Oh, it's it's very boring technical stuff. I, I can't imagine. I'm, I'm like leaning that. in the door, trying to look around. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm 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 sure you could give me a fascinating it's, explanation. It's, you seem very uh, attuned to it. Sorry, guys, we've just had uh, a couple of the horse bots follow us. Oh no, it's okay. It looks like the dear. other guys are taking care of it. Okay, that's good. At least. Jeez. Good on. Yeah, no, carry on. Sorry, um, the others are taking care of it. Oh, thank goodness. Um, no, it, it's it's it, 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 it is what it is. Uh, no, it's quite all right. It's quite. You, do you have cybernetics? I I did a I did several. I did a month's worth of research into cybernetics. Oh. I'm basically an expert. I'm like, oh, why I am indeed augmented in a few ways. If you'd uh, get a look at them, I'm uh, yes. I'm uh, not not to... right now. Obviously, I'm not going to just open you up and start prodding at your cybernetics. That oh. would, of course, be of quite. Course. I mean, that would be rather forward. You'd have to buy me a drink first. Ah, ha ha! He does no, that no. like really, like really obviously like manufactured, polite ah, scientist laugh. Ah, ha ah. ha! But yeah. like, yeah, it's it's yeah. He, it's, and, I, and I sort of like I point to my eyes and I'm like, yes, it's for uh, targeting. I never really picked up handguns as a skill so the agency decided to round me out as it were ah of course yes but yes i can provide medical needs drugs whatever you ask Wonderful. Well, just ask me closing the door slowly and I'm, I'm, I'm like, this is so sus this is so <laughs> sus but i'm not gonna say it. i'm just like all right have a have a nice time yes. uh in, in that in that drab lab uh, and i'm gonna just you know so wow. the, the lab isn't quite as drab anymore because you've managed to forge a bond with the creature to the extent that you've been able to pull the nest out of the ventilation yes. shaft and put it into a big glass container and the eggs inside have hatched and there are about four of these little cheeping um, iguana bunnies yes. Uh, yes. that are hungry for mealworms. Now do yes. I... Did they make a sound? Yeah, that was the thing you missed. Oh my god. I'm like, oh, the chirping of uh, iguana bunnies? Not at all. Could Not I just all. Say uh, it must be like some kind of program or something. It's just beeping. Yeah, yeah I'm, I got like beeping in a lab. As soon I'm as like, I've whatever. closed the lab door, whatever the equivalent of putting like the little chain lock on the door <laughs> is, I want to do that for the lab door. Just like, chunk. So you've, you've got like this, this mummy iguana bunny and four yeah. four baby iguana bunnies and the, the baby iguana bunnies are in a big glass container that's next to one of your chip desks and the mummy can get in and out by climbing yeah. up and down stuff okay. and you're feeding her the mealworms and she farms them on to the to the offspring and feeds them and you make a few yeah. notes about mm -hmm. the behavior and sobillary and iguana bunnies veronique while while you were gone um sasha and raggy got us um it some more soft. bits so um good job sasha and raggy <laughs> <laughs> all right so um lee as as you leave the lab how i leave the lab comes up the the gangplank carrying this enormous case and i'm like oh they've already transferred the package uh yeah this is the package we've got to keep secure and not mention to anybody uh except for the person that looks exactly like the person that we got hired by exactly like the person you got hired by 
Yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely some weird, sketchy shit going on. It's either plastic surgery or robots. I don't give a shit. Uh, so do we have, have any more? You, have you looked inside? Why would I do that? Why aren't you curious? I... No. You have such an uncreative mind. Yes, yes, I'm sure we'll find some appropriate place to stow it. Uh, and this used to be, like, a drug dealer's ride, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, there's uh, got to be smuggling I'm snoop holes. I, I, I'm snooping around, like... I'm I'm just like going mentally down like yeah right, where they normally have the smuggling holds and I'm like kicking in like I'm looking for the hidden compartments you know? oh yeah you 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 found over a dozen in the last week already right. just it's convenient little slideaways and hideaways and floorboards that can be lifted up and vents that don't go anywhere and yeah I uh, I find I find like the most the like the most inconspicuous one that it still has a bunch of shit around it so like like machinery and other problems so that if you were trying to like scan wall by wall you might hit other stuff and i'm just like yeah yeah it's still in here if you Perfect. really don't want to look and see what's inside why would i did they give you any extra instructions or warnings or other clues um they told us uh, to only give it to the person that looked like the person that we got it from. Ah, which means somebody else is going to try and get it from us. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, you really? Followed? I don't care. Was anybody watching? That's a good question. Was I followed? You um, were not followed to the best. Ah, followed. let's find out, actually, whether yeah. you noticed or not, because Maybe. that's not really a fair thing to say. Now you can make a recon check. Okay, yeah, I actually do have some skill in this, but I haven't gotten a success on a, a roll yet, so. You have got a reroll that someone gave you a while back. I do. Um, wow, that is just keeping up the. Fuck it, why not? I think I oh, also got a reroll earlier, but I, I will not retroactively use it to oh, see the Oh! Wait a second, shit. you have Rican points and you ended up at if it were a Bane, you'd be a one? I, are you sure your character sheet is correct? I don't plus know. Zero, plus zero. Uh, Pat, well, so... Uh, I think I've just been rolling poorly. <laughs> so, so recon... No, recon, because if you had anything zero, right, in kinda? recon, in recon, you wouldn't yeah. be ending up... You, you have to have a minus to end up with a one, because you cannot roll lower than two. Well, I have zero rank in recon. She rolls a two and adds a... She rolled a one and a two, and she's got no stat modifier, no skill, but she's trained, so there's no... No, name no, what I'm saying is, look at the Bane, Okay. It would be okay. Let's oh oh sorry, it's one day six. Okay, sorry. Never mind. Okay, so you're rolling at zero for recon. Unfortunate. Okay, so to the best of your ability, you don't think you were followed. Yeah, I wasn't followed. Seems kind of standard. Uh, frankly, this guy's kind of uh, kind of worried for nothing, if you ask me. But and I'm not my job. I assure you, there is nothing standard about any of this. But I am quite intrigued. Do I know about like any like group of people who operates who all on the same face like from my time as a spy? No, that would be like, weird. That's some weird shit right there. All right, so that's some weird shit, and I'm going to like curious, and then I'm gonna you know after we stow it in the compartment, what what do you do, Pat? Like, do you just like? Yeah, are you, you going like, back to pick up the Marques? Close the compartment and go back to pick up the Marques. <laughs> All right. Once Pat's off the ship, I want to reopen the compartment and take a look at the at the uh, the package. I don't okay. even tell you not to. I think my <laughs> character doesn't care. I well, I waited until you were off the ship anyway, so you don't even. Okay, so to... she's off the ship. You reopen the package. You pull out this um, this briefcase. It's quite heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see why Harwell was carrying it rather than anybody else. Feels slightly heavier than maybe you would expect for something of its size. So it's kind of like um, two brief. This this thickness of two briefcases stuck together, and about one and a half briefcases long. Black, shiny surface, magnetically locked. No visible way of opening it. There is definitely a seal at the top. It's got All these. Right shiny chromey silver metals on each of the corner points that also sort of shave off the corners i would like to investigate for any sort of maker's mark or indication of material like i'm not opening it and i'm not touching the seal i'm just trying to see where this even came from is this just a suitcase someone bought at this a store is definitely not a suitcase this someone bought i mean you can see that without having to make any rolls at all this hmm. is 
This is a unique device. Uh, you could roll on electronics. You could roll on engineering. You could roll on... Anyway, that could be an investigate. Yeah, investigate will work right. as I'll well. Go for, I'll go for the investigate then, because I have a negative three to everything else you just listed. A uh, 12 is my result. Yowza. Okay, so this is clearly a proprietary container. Uh, this has been designed to house something specific. Looking at the way it's fastened, um, the lock on the top of it, not easily bypassed, but certainly bypassable. Mm -hmm. Whatever is inside it, the case has been designed very specifically for it. All right. And there's no indication of who's made this at all. Just it has to be a bespoke model. Uh, the technology involved is above that of most of the polities. So most of the polities that are active in the sector are running at a tech level of 10. You think this thing is probably better than your best cyberware, which is running at tech level 12. I have a question. Yeah, TL um, item, yeah. I have, I have a, I have a piece of ancient alien technology. Is, is does you it do. look anything? Does it look anything like the lock? Does the lock or anything about it remind me? Do you have me it of, on your person? Yeah, I would have my weird ancient alien technology on me at all times. Okay, so you pulled your weird ancient alien technology out, and while it doesn't look anything alike the box, it pulses in your hand which is an unfamiliar thing it's not done that before mm, normally it just sits there as this inert piece of shit that you shake and occasionally shout at and be like work damn you and this time it works without you shouting at it it, it does uh, something it seems to respond to the box i hold it up real close to the lock As you get it closer to the lock, these little tiny tendrils stretch out of it and like seem to wave towards it like the tentacles on a jellyfish. And they sort of stroke around this electronic lock. And it pops open. The mag lock just what? releases like... What have you done? And the box, a seam suddenly appears around the outside edge of the box. Huh? Um. Um. I'm getting paid for this. And the box is now open. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take a quick peek inside. Okay, hang on a sec. Trying to get someone to close down the prediction for me. Because I can't do mm. it anymore. I need someone to close the prediction before we can stop on an awesome cliffhanger. Like the mysterious box opening. Sorry. That's sure. okay, it's not your fault. Well, I mean, we had another person to go say hi to. We could double back. So you arrive back at the bar, Pat. Mm. And and Howard is still you are Howard. What am I saying? Ah. Vim is still ready. sat there with this guy. Um, she appears totally at her ease. He appears to be somewhat highly strung now, like he's nervous about something. Hey, uh, Vim, job is done. Um, need more time here, or we get to go say hi to? Um, I don't know what. What past. do you think? I think that the job you requested of me is done, and this man seems to be desirous of uh, some leave from the bar, and I seem to be interested in uh, I'm, making sure we get everything done. I'm gonna stare at the man's eyes, because I think that's the only thing we can see from her face, and uh, say, if I overstayed my welcome, 
Can you make an electronics cybernetics role or an investigation role at minus two? Okay, uh, electronics, like the thing, like itself, I have it at one. But yeah, but that has to be specialized. Like the, the sub things would be at zero, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, so you, you're at... So I'll do my electronics, but I'll do a minus one on it to do like it's a zero, right? Okay. Okay, that should work. Um, I get the minus three. Uh, you can't pick up anything in his eyes. He's obviously very good at guarding his feelings and emotions. Uh, you're used to being able to look someone in the eyes and work your, your devastating magic on them and, and having them give something away. This guy's maybe a poker player or something. He has no tell. Right. And what does he answer? Of course not. Um, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. However, I, I will have to go and acknowledge that our business has been concluded understood i slap him on the back and i say you do that in a familial gesture that i learned from the scouts because that's definitely not yun on commonplace no. physical contact <laughs> madness i've been in the scouts for 20 years i'm not like totally uh totally uh, uh green <laughs> and, and you've suffered some of like very drunken marquis Got Marcus grinding on you late at night, so you know. uh, I wouldn't <laughs> use the verb suffer, but I've endured, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, so she's she slaps him on the back and she says, All right, I, I think we got one other person to, to hit up. Yeah, so I guess we'll be on our way to the archaeologist. Yeah, so, uh... All right, so it's back to the ship, then. All right, it's up to you, yep. <laughs> but we... Oh, yeah, right. Because uh, you haven't contacted him yet. Our, but, uh, I suppose like you could just contact TAS him on your closer? device. Isn't, like, the TAS closer to contact them or something? Yeah, but you're not members, so you can't get in. No, but there's outside terminals. Oh, yeah, they've got you... terminals outside. You could just call him on your... Oh, like, I can do that? ...personal device, yeah. Yeah, but then we're in a public space. Uh, probably better go back to the ship before I announce loudly where I'm going on the street. All right, so you head back to the ship and um, pull up a call to this, this archaeologist guy. And he appears on the screen completely unchanged, um, you know, no guts, no glory. You get the full package. Uh, quite a bulbous nose. He's got sort of um, white, grey stubble. His hair on the side sticks out and is kind of missing on top. And he's got these little tiny, teeny round glasses over each of his eyes that can't possibly be much help if he's not looking anything other than directly ahead. Hello? Yes? Yes, hello? Yes. Yes. You requested Hello. transport to the place. Or the ah, place the yes. Um, do you have a ship that can weather the possibility of a plasma storm? I have a ship that uh, can give you the opportunity to get on Cneus to get to a starport level A instead. Hmm. Well, and much more population and better odds for you to find transport to your final destination. Uh, it's a good offer, but then I'm paying twice. Uh, unless I can uh, persuade you to maybe make the, the journey after Kneos, because I, I just want to get there. All right. Uh, I, can, uh, like, I can take you as a passenger on regular rates to Kneos. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when we get to Kneos... 
I'll let you know if I can get to the belt, or at least you'll be in a better situation to find transport to the belt. Mm-hmm. 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 Can our ship take that? So, uh... I, I, I'm limited in funds, you see. I, I have enough funds to get us to the location. Unfortunately, a rather rather uh, dis- disreputable I am chap leaving has... shortly for Cnaeus. Yes. Do you want the ride or not? Well, well provisionally, yes. But I, I'm limited in how much money I have actually left to travel. So uh, I have 20,000 credits earmarked for my transport. Right, I can take you out as a basic passenger to Cnaeus for you and your assistant. What do you say? I think it's a good deal. Not for 20,000, it's not. That's the Not for not twice. No, no, a basic rate. Oh, a basic rate. Hmm. So that will save you like a that will save you a lot and get you to And it will get us to Cnaeus where we have a greater chance of finding someone who will Take us to the site. Very well. Very well. Yes, uh, uh, I agree. All right. Uh, do you have a doctor on board? We have a professor of many science. But is he a medical doctor? Yeah, uh, he is. yes. OK, yes. Uh, very well, then. I, I don't really like low births. But, no, uh, uh, basic, not low births, basic. Oh, I see. Oh, that's very generous of you. That basic rate. Uh, very, very well then. Yes, yes. Basic rate uh, to Canaeus, and then we'll see where we go from there. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, very I'll good. be ready to depart within the hour, though. Uh, what ship is it? Uh, we're at Bay Four. Okay, Bay Four, Bay Four. Right. Okay, um, Janice. He shouts, Janice, we need to pack. He forgets to turn off his device as he starts getting up and blundering. Right. I'm just going to say right away, they're going to like share a stage room for the both of them because to me, that's basic. <laughs> Your version of basic is giving them a state room. They draw the split between them two. I mean, you know, I don't usually do transport stuff. I'm uh, mostly in the business of uh, investigating and You really should have had the person who doesn't know the value of money doing the business things. Maybe in the future we will find... <laughs> I think I'm the only, like... <laughs> I think I'm the only, like, middle-class actual worker. <laughs> Not a fucking but, scientist, but, a pop like, star, I mean, and a marquee. We're, we're going there... I anywhere. was a scout. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going there anyway, so might as well put them in an empty room. <laughs> oh, this is great. We have plenty of empty rooms. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and, and can I do a recon this time again to see if I was followed? <laughs> well, we can roll it. Yes, yes, you can. Sadly, it is not like Call of Duty where you roll things until you succeed and then you get to <laughs> go up on that. Oh, it is my first, my Gosh. first success of the night. Your <laughs> first success of the night. And this is um, coming back from the bar to the ship. Um, the, yes. I already made the the first one. The yeah, this is the no, second one. Yeah, yeah. With with Vero. Yes, yes, second one. Yep. Um, oh, what were the colours on the voting thing? The voting thing? Do you remember blue the great vote that I did at the beginning? Blue and pink? Oh. It's blue and pink. It's always blue and pink. But do you remember which yeah. was which? Well, blue was yes, please, I think. I don't think it was. I think it was pink that was yes, please. I think I voted blue and I have wanted them, so I don't know. I, I voted for blue, uh, white, and pink, uh, personally, but... Uh... I think <laughs> blue was yes, please. Like it was the first option, and the second one was no, take my growth. And the second option is pink. So you think it's blue? Yeah. Oh yes, I think so. 
95%. Okay, well, if it's not, then someone, I'm about to win everybody else's groats. <laughs> Amazing. You can blame them more. Blue was I do. There the we go. Thank you, money. McNeil Five. <laughs> Blue was I do. We're gonna, we're gonna. Tr there we go. Look at that. Prediction result is I do. I do. Woo! So I there we go. There's, there's our, there's our great groat giveaway for this game. So that's uh, the great groatening. Great groatening. Yeah. It's it's the Marquez who doesn't know the value of money. That's just. So that's that's um, a hundred thousand two hundred and thirty nine groats going to Onomichi and 14 others who made the right choice of voting against me. So so well done, you guys. And please enjoy your Garblag groats. Milk them for what they're worth. Use them for rerolls. I am going to close us down there. Uh, because we've been going for ages and Nye is about to go to sleep in his chair. The poor wee lamb. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much for joining warm. us this evening. Next week, tune in to find out what's in the box. Is it Gwyneth Paltrow's head? What's in the box? Yes, the answer to that is yes. Uh, next week on... Garblag Games on Monday we may have a developer stream special we may not depending on how things play out on do you guys have anything on Diesel Shot on Monday oh yeah yeah Indeed. we do Indeed, that is the night of High Road our D&D 5e adventure where they're about to enter the base the Brass Eye Citadel a spooky tower full of magical research and uh, wizard spies as they fight their rebellion in Gatherdak. So come out for that. 8.30 p.m. Eastern, midnight 30. And what else madness-wise have you got for the rest of the week on Diesel Shot? I keep forgetting well, we've got Diesel Shot. Wednesday, we 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern, we have our World's Out number game, Arc Spire, where our party will decide to heal or destroy an alien biome using a soul. Ooh, sponsored by Fool's Moon Entertainment. They're great. Yeah, I actually Thursday come nights, out for that. It's uranium great. Uranium Fever. Uh, it's our Fallout tabletop role-playing game going for almost two years now. Huge campaign. We're pushing the climax. Always something fun happening. 8.30 p.m. Eastern on again. And then Saturdays, every other Saturday, Pat will run a Change Star Z sci-fi adventure. And this particular Saturday, it's not quite a game, but we're going to be doing a mass test of the spaceship rules. But we'll next Saturday, through. I'll be running it. I again. mean, frankly, you could log into Diesel Shot just to watch what Pat's dressed up as from session to session. <laughs> <laughs> Half the time you can check out Garblog and find me in the city. That too, yes. <laughs> but it's so <laughs> next week on Garblog Games, on Monday we may or may not have a dev stream. On Tuesday we've got our Definitely Not Space Hulk Dodeca special. Um, I'm playing a weird, crazy <laughs> shaman kid who can destroy <laughs> you with his mind. I can't wait for the untawing of Jeff One. Well, quite. Uh, on Wednesday, the day of Wotan, we have got Once Upon a Time in the Old West. I did neglect Tuesday Garblag North America, didn't I? Veronique, aren't you in that one? It's up to Veronique, yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it's Tuesday or Thursday I that we're doing the Thursdays. wrestling. Well, either on Tuesday. It looks like it's Tuesday. Aaron's in the chat going, Worldwide Wrestling! Oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> I really did oh, think yeah. it was... It yeah. could be Tuesday, it I could be it Thursday. Thursday. Either way, God Black North America. They well, got some wrestling. Shout um, out to Aaron for the gift uh, It's replacing uh, Call of Tulu. So That's Tuesday. It'll probably be Tuesday, yeah. It's Tuesday, isn't it? I called out of it because I'm I'm kind of uh, burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. you got Veronique to take your place in North America. Thank you. And Veronique so actually much. has experience in wrestling. Isn't that right? I do. Yes, I... I trained with wrestlers who are I miss them. They're uh, they're working for AEW now. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, I know, right? like a, yeah, one of my trainers I got the, oh got the beat down on Sting like a few weeks ago. It's so cool. You're such a badass. And then well, on not me. <laughs> Thursday we've got what do I do on Thursday? We've got Pathfinder on Thursday and it's gonna work this time. 
because the computer has been punched into order to do its work. And then Friday, we find out what's in the box, where the archaeologist wants to go and why, and what kind of cool shit they can pick up on Cneus, which is a place in the consensus of Atia, so they have the participatory democracy. Yeah. And First thing you have seafood. to do is to vote. <laughs> yeah, so when you land there, you might have to start voting to take part in local democracy. Which Thank you so much for joining at? us tonight on Garblad Games. Have a great weekend. We will see you wild and crazy people next week. Thank you so much for your attendance. It's been a pleasure. Sorry for that little snafu earlier. And good night. <laughs>